Well, hi there. I'm here today with Otis, who is a King Cobra, because I want to talk to you about these absolutely incredible and potentially extremely dangerous snakes. I, I also must mention that I'm here at New England Reptile Distributors not only to see Otis, but also to see Lilith, who is the only leucistic king cobra in the United States and one of only two known in the entire world. She's also a cantankerous little creature and I got to hold her today. So uh, this is a heck of a video. Many of you are probably aware that I was bitten by my false water cobra a while back when it first arrived and a lot of people commented about what an idiot I was for handling that snake because I think you thought it was a legitimate cobra. Uh, it is not, right? The false in false water cobra isn't that the water is false, it's that it's not a real cobra. They do look like a cobra, they hood up like a cobra, they're mildly venomous, they're rear fanged venomous, and uh, I gotta tell you, when I was bitten by that false water cobra, I knew it wasn't life threatening, but I'd heard mixed reports as to how intense that venom was gonna be. It was no big deal. The venom of a king cobra, though, is a huge big deal. So if you thought I was an idiot before, uh, you're really going to think I'm an idiot today. Because the king cobra is extremely venomous. The biggest thing, you know, isn't necessarily the potency of their venom, but the fact that this is the largest, or at least the longest, venomous snake in the entire world, and they have a bucket load of venom. And they're willing to share it with you if you won't leave them alone. On top of that, you know, as I said, they're the longest venomous snake in the world. They get really big and they're fast and they're intelligent. And so when a king cobra is feeling threatened by you, it can close ground on you in a hurry and make you pay for being such a scary predator. Males are generally longer than females, so there is some sexual dimorphism between them, but even females get huge, 10 plus feet not being uncommon. Males can get up to, you know, 16 feet in some cases. Some, some reports of them being even larger do exist. So this is a really, really long, really fast, really athletic, really intelligent snake. One thing that this does have in common with my false water cobra is that it is not actually a true cobra from the genus Naja. Uh, that said, my false water cobra isn't even closely related to cobras. This is their closest living relative and um, probably more dangerous than many cobras. So they're for real, even if they're not actually members of that genus. They're actually members of their own genus, which is Ophiophagus, which literally means snake eaters. And uh, they're not misnamed. In the wild, this is the king. And king, as in with king snakes and king cobra, usually refers to snakes that eat other snakes. And these guys eat other snakes. Snakes, quite frankly, are the perfect food source for a snake. Uh, you know, when you're a snake, you swallow things that start narrow and gradually get larger. And one thing is you need to swallow them head first so that their legs fold the right direction. Wouldn't it be delightful if you could find some long, skinny thing to eat with no legs at all? Best meal ever. King Cobras are definitely one of the coolest snakes in the world, though I gotta tell you, I have encountered several more today that definitely give them a run for their money. And Lilith, who I encountered with, I mean, you know, not only is she possibly the coolest species of snake in the world, she might be the very coolest individual snake in the entire world. And she knows it, right? And she's ready to defend her title at all costs. But the question that we are here to answer today is, is the king cobra the right pet reptile for you? And the answer is no. It almost certainly is not. There is almost no way that the king cobra is the best pet snake for you. But some of you are going to hear that and you're going to say, so you're saying there's a chance. In order to help you answer this question, is the king cobra the best pet snake for you? We're going to break this down into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the King Cobra a score of zero out of five, which, uh, you know, this one 
I'm handling. And he's trying to make a point, right? I, I should tell you about Otis. So Otis is a snake that lives at New England Reptile Distributors. He has had his venom glands removed. And I, I want to be really clear, that isn't something they did to him. This is something that was done to him by his original owner, um, potentially by a veterinarian, because back in the day, you could get veterinarians to remove the venom glands of snakes. Today, that's something that we really just don't do. This snake, though, does not have venom glands. However, you know, venom is a modified saliva, and it sounds like their saliva, when injected, still can have some interesting effects on you. So I still don't want to be bitten by this snake. This snake still has fangs, He's still got that saliva, and believe it or not, he has no idea that he has no venom. In fact, it's probably true that cobras generally don't know that they have venom either, right? They just know that when their life is in danger, they should try to scare it off and bite if necessary, and this snake would do exactly the same. The other two snakes, though, that you see me and Kevin from here at Nerd interacting with, uh, they are fully intact king cobras the danger was real. And when I say real, I mean really real. This snake is as good as a king cobra is gonna be, and the reason he's so incredibly good... I'm not sassing you, I'm so sorry. The reason he is so incredibly good is largely because he doesn't have the potent venom that other king cobras have. If he did, he would not have nearly as much interaction with people as he does, and he would not be as comfortable with the situation. In order to get a king cobra to be like this, you need to interact with it a lot. And that is an extremely dangerous thing to do. Uh, you know, the reality is, it is possible to pet a great white shark. It's possible to ride a tiger. Um, it's possible to stick your head into the mouth of a crocodile. All of these things are possible, but they're really stupid things to do. It is very possible to handle a king cobra. Totally possible, right? But it's a really bad idea most of the time. If you know what you're doing, they're, they're very intelligent snakes. They're very good at telegraphing what they're thinking. You can read it. It is very, very possible to interact with one of these snakes and not get bitten. One of the biggest advantages you'll have is that cobras are very predictable as far as their strike range. They, they strike about as far as they can get their head off the ground and then add in how far they can push themselves forward while they're striking. So you add all that together and that's how far it can strike, which can actually be a tremendous distance when you're talking about a 16-foot snake. In addition to this, you know, if you make a mistake, the consequences are incredible. Right? They are incredibly devastating consequences. This is a big, shockingly fast snake it can cover a lot of ground in a hurry and then deliver a ton of very potent venom. You know, and the, and the reality is like, even if you're using proper tools like a snake hook, uh, you know, you would, you'd probably tail it and then you'd try to control the front of it with a snake hook. You can't tail a 16 foot snake, right? There's no way to get that snake so far away from you using your arm that it can't double back on you. It's too big, it's too long. This isn't like anything else you've ever held. The reality is it is very possible to handle king cobras without having a devastating accident. But if you do it enough times, it will happen. Uh, we, we discussed this actually a little bit in our Black Widow video, and I stand by everything said there, right? This is something, if you, you know, if you have a smaller one, and you know what you're doing, and you're with trained professionals, and you use the right equipment, you can do it fairly safe, but by the time that they get to be 10 plus feet long, you're out of your league. You're out of your league. There are very, very few people on Earth that are going to be okay doing this on a regular basis. Just don't handle it. I have no experience with anything like this, right? I, I have a lot of experience with snakes. Like, I know how to read snakes. Never, never interacted with a cobra before, and I can tell you, they're not like any other snake I've ever encountered. They're different. They're different. This snake, I, this is one thing I want to mention to you guys. They don't feel like other snakes. They're very strong and rigid. They don't sit on you at all. Like, they don't, they don't hold on to you at all. The only thing I can say that is like handling this is, is holding the skeletal pusic. 
the, the European legless lizards, they feel like this. This is just a giant one of those that'll kill you if it bites you. Hey, just a quick pause from this totally frightening video uh, with a slightly less frightening false cobra, which is my false water cobra, Shelby, who's a pretty cool dude. But I just wanted to share a little bit about this game, which is called Frog Knight. It's a, a little known fact, but, but a reality that the three families that, that all work together to make Clint's Reptile videos, before we even were doing this or even dreamed of doing this, we all became friends because we enjoy playing games together. And we were approached by the creators of Frog Knight, and before we could endorse this product or let them sponsor this video, which they have done, and we are so grateful for that, we had to play it. And we had a really great time. For starters, it's got fun characters that are like frogs and crocodiles and stuff, but like frogs with a chainsaw and crocodiles with a hammer, and they're in an epic battle royale. But we also were able to play this game with our children, so it's a really fun game for families, but it's also fun if it's just a bunch of adults playing together. It's quick to learn, and we really enjoyed it. And I can tell you, I promise you, we wouldn't be telling you that this is a great game if we didn't enjoy it, and we really enjoyed it. We've got a link down in the description, and so if you decide that Frog Knight is the game for you, um, please use that link to buy it, and, and tell us how much you enjoy it down the road, because it was a blast. I'm definitely going to get one. Loved it. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Oh, and no big deal. But special for those of you that use our affiliate link, they created an extra character who happens to be an all-white, leucistic king cobra named Lilith. Seems appropriate, given you're here. So definitely use that link when you buy it to get awesome Lilith as a character. You'll have Lilith! Carry on. When it comes to care, we give the King Cobra a score of 1 out of 5. Snakes are built to fit into small spaces. That makes keeping snakes contained relatively difficult to achieve. Short, heavy-bodied snakes are the easiest to contain because they can't get up as high, they can't fit through as small of spaces. Snakes that are over 10 feet long, that are skinny, athletic, and intelligent, are the most difficult snakes you could possibly try to contain. And that's that's not good, right? When a snake gets out and you didn't know it was out, that's a bad deal. Especially, and I should just add this, especially if it happens to be one of the deadliest snakes on the planet. And the reality is most people that keep snakes at some point have had a snake escape. They're good at it. And few are better than the King Cobra. Because of this, you cannot skimp on a secure enclosure you have to have one that is virtually escape-proof and foolproof. Do not make any mistakes. Uh, you know, not recently. I, I had a day gecko get away because when I closed the sliding door, it jammed a little bit and I didn't notice and it was out. You know, but when a day gecko gets away in your house, you find the day gecko and you herd it back into the enclosure. When the king cobra gets away in your house, you know, you might not know about it until you're hopping into bed and found its dark, warm place. The best possible scenario is going to be to have an enclosure that can be divided securely into two or more sections. That way you can find where the snake is located, divide off half, clean the side where the snake is not, and then wait for it to be on the other side to clean the other side. If you can't do this, at least have a lockable hide inside the enclosure so that the snake can go in the hide and you can close it and then safely maneuver inside the enclosure without being around the snake. Because believe me, if you're in the enclosure with a king cobra, it's going to be very interested in what you're doing. The reality is, if you don't have one of these things where you can close off the snake from the enclosure, you're going to have to handle your king cobra on a regular basis, and we already covered the fact that that's not a very good idea. The enclosure also needs to be enormous, because this is a large, intelligent, highly active snake, and it's going to need to explore its world, right? And so this is this is a serious enclosure and there can't be any gaps anywhere that would allow this snake to escape. The reality is just, just keeping a snake, you know, it's, it's not that hard, but this is an active snake. They, they can spray feces all over the place. So you're gonna have to go in there and clean it up 
regularly and that can be a very, very dangerous activity. They eat a ton because this is such an active snake and snakes should actually comprise a large part of its diet, which for a lot of us, you know, where does one go to get a regular supply of relatively large frozen pod snakes, right? This, this isn't something I can get. It's not even something I want to get, right? They, they bum me out. So if you're not okay feeding snakes like ball pythons and small articulated pythons and colubrid snakes, if you're not okay feeding those to another snake, king cobra is not for you. Additionally, I, I want to recommend that you go captive bred. All right, if you're gonna get a king cobra, which is not a great idea, get a captive bred king cobra because at least it's gonna probably do really well for you in captivity. One of the biggest things is when you bring in a wild caught king cobra, a lot of times it's really difficult to get them feeding. That was actually one of the hard things that they had to deal with with Lilith because she came out of the wild, you know, it's unbelievable that she'd survived to her size in the wild being colored as she was. And she may have made up for it only by being stupendously cantankerous. But, you know, they had a little bit of a hard time getting her going. And these are these are experts, and they did, and she's eating strong now. But that is a real challenge with a lot of king cobras. Not to mention the fact that they come in totally full of parasites that have been having a field day during whatever time it has been since they were captured. You can easily lose a wild-caught king cobra because it won't feed or it's too sick when it gets there. Captive bred, as is always the case, is the way to go, even with king cobras. Make sure that you have a water bowl large enough for the snake to soak in it. And do bear in mind that these guys are gonna make a big mess all the time in the water bowl, all over the enclosure. They're sort of like Kribos to keep as far as the mess they like to make. So just be prepared for that and know that cleaning that cage is still dangerous. The temperatures for these guys do need to be relatively high at least in the basking spot. They definitely need a place where they can get out of those high temperatures. But make sure that that enclosure has these high temperatures available to them and that can be challenging given that the enclosure is enormous. So that is something you need to have all dialed in before you have your snake. Generally speaking, you know, one of the pros for snakes is that their care is just much simpler than it is for most lizards. Not really the case for king cobras. They're sort of like keeping a very large, intelligent, active lizard. And so care is tough, not to mention the fact that if you make a mistake while performing the care, you might die. When it comes to hardiness, we give the king cobra a score of four out of five. Wild caught individuals have all the typical wild caught animal problems. And so, you know, we still recommend going captive bred. And if you do, and you give them proper care, they're probably gonna do really well for you. Like I mentioned before, it can be difficult to get a wild caught individual feeding. Just one of the biggest things to keep in mind, no matter how you get your your king cobra is when feeding it snakes, make sure that you take care of any pesticide problems, any illness, you know, you gotta be careful where you get your snakes because snakes carry a lot of things that snakes can get. When it comes to availability, we give the king cobra a score of two out of five. Unless of course we're talking about Lilith. If you want an all white king cobra at this point in time, we give the king cobra a score of zero out of five. But to be perfectly honest, I think king cobras are way too available, right? It's, it's easy. If you really committed to getting a king cobra, it's as easy to get a king cobra as say a crocodile monitor or um, a shingleback skink. It's easier than those, you know? And this is, this is very different than a shingleback skink. It is illegal in some places to keep a king cobra, so do know your local laws before you consider getting one. Uh, you will probably need permits in most places to have a king cobra, and uh, those might be a challenge to get. However, there are some places where you can just jump online and order a king cobra and it'll be shipped to your door next day. So there's a feather in your cap. Uh, like I said, leucistic king cobras at this point in time are impossible to get, though Nerd is working on fixing that. Um, honestly, if you are one of the few people who is right for a king cobra, why not have the coolest king cobra imaginable? However, for those of us who are not in this tiny, tiny, tiny subset of all expert herp keepers, probably no king cobra would be the best choice of all. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the king cobra a score of one out of five. Unless of course we're talking about Lilith, then zero out of five. That's an expensive snake. I don't even know how much, didn't ask, too much. Insane. 
Insane is the amount of money I think that snake would cost. And of course, it's even impossible to get one if you wanted one. The Cobra itself will be fairly expensive, which is probably a good thing, but that will be in no way the most expensive part about getting a King Cobra. Unless we're talking about Lilith, then it's just bonkers level expensive. The enclosure though, generally speaking, is gonna be what's gonna cost you an awful lot about owning a King Cobra. You better have money, space, and the ability to build a prison so tight that even a super athletic intelligent garden hose couldn't escape. You'll need to know where to get frozen thawed snakes on a regular basis, which uh, I don't know how to do that. So get a freezer. You're gonna need a water bowl, lamps, substrate, hides, sort of normal snake stuff. Oh yeah, and one other thing, anti-venom. Uh, you should probably have multiple vials of anti-venom for a king cobra bite. The reality is that bites can kill you in less than an hour if you don't get anti-venom. And the anti-venom doesn't last too long, so you're gonna need to replenish it regularly and you're gonna need to have a lot of vials on hand. And the reason I'm telling you to get your own anti-venom is because, well, just try this. Just do an experiment this afternoon. Just wander down to the hospital holding your arm and tell them you've been bitten by a king cobra and you need some anti-venom and see the look on their face, right? They're gonna be like, where the heck? Where the heck did you run into a king cobra, right? They're gonna have anti-venom on hand for any sort of local venomous snakes that you have, but they're just gonna look at you like, what? A king cobra? No, you weren't bitten by a king cobra, you moron. You were bitten by some local snake. And you're like, no, I have a king cobra. And they're gonna be like, well, we've got morphine, right? We'll make some calls. We'll make some calls and see if they can helicopter something over. Right? And, and you know, they'll get a call and they'll be like, hey, it'll be here in three hours, so just sit tight. Just sit tight and see how it goes. Right? Bring your own antivenin into the hospital with you or you'll probably die. That's the take home. Get antivenin. It's not cheap. It's part of the upfront cost. And this is why overall we give the King Cobra a score of 1.6 out of 5. Actually just 1.0 for Lilith, but you can't have her if you want her. The King Cobra is arguably the coolest snake in the world. Lilith is the coolest snake in the world, full stop. And it would be so cool to have a king cobra, no doubt, until the horrifying reality that you have a king cobra kicked in, right? Right then, when some sort of sanity came back, you'd be like, what have I done? This is a massively bad idea, right? This is, this is kind of on par with getting a tiger, right? This is a, a horrifically bad idea. And that's why I would never want one, not ever. But I should tell you, I've had an incredible time here today at Nerd. Um, I will never forget this one day that I had interacting with King Cobras, counting my lucky star that I got to interact with King Cobras, and also being ever so grateful that I don't have a King Cobra. But now I'd like to turn the time over to Kevin, who has multiple King Cobras, <laughs> to talk to you a little bit about the realities of owning these snakes. King Cobras are to be kept by uh, reptile experts generally uh, because a venomous King Cobra is uh, a serious, serious animal. Uh, there's dangers. Uh, they're the largest, longest growing venomous reptile or venomous snake out there. So if this animal were to bite you, they can deliver a massive amount of venom, well enough to kill 10 of me. Uh, so when you are dealing with King Cobras, uh, you need to really be doing it for a reason. This is for people that are willing to take the, uh, the financial responsibility, the commitment that an animal like this is. King Cobras are snake eaters. So naturally where they come from, these guys are gonna predate on pretty much any other snake that they can track down and uh, envenomate and ingest. Uh, in captivity, it's kind of hard to feed a King Cobra its entire life other snakes. I have a lot of snakes. I end up with stillborn snakes. Sometimes we have snakes that actually just die during reproductive cycles or they perish for whatever reasons and those animals are frozen. Uh, and as long as they're, they're still intact, they're uh, good animals to recycle that animal so that life wasn't lost for no reason. Clint got his first uh, successful uh, interactions with uh, King Cobras here at New England Reptile and uh, King Cobras are no joke, uh, you really gotta be on point, you, you really, you have to 
relying your tools, you have to rely on your flow, you have to be very confident. If you're erratic, if you're nervous, you potentially are gonna have problems. So once again, this is a this is not a pet animal. This is no joke. These are uh, uh, the real deal. You have a lot of things to consider when you are keeping king cobras, and uh, this is something that is definitely uh, needs to be explored if you ever think about even keeping a venomous animal. And you better really know your stuff. You need to be a responsible person. You need to be methodical in everything that you do, and you need to be able to keep something like this safely, uh, reliably, where you don't endanger yourself, your family, other people around you, and even your neighborhood, because when you keep venomous animals, you're representing our entire industry. What I can do is I can take even venomous animals and I can, I can deal with them by reading their behaviors. And every time I interact with that animal, I can gain a little bit of their trust. And at some point that animal just loses its ill will or its defensive nature and is willing to actually start thinking. Once the animal starts thinking, the animal behaves very differently. Otis is a great example of an animal does not know he's venomous. He has no idea, there's no need to bite. So you could literally, this animal is so remarkable that you could do this with you know a venomous animal, but I won't do it because I have a brain. And the negatives far outweigh any advantage I'd ever have to doing that. So I used to, you know, I used to free handle uh, various rattlesnakes and stuff like that. And at some point I realized that the rattlesnakes are so important to me that if I ever were to make a mistake and mistakes do happen, we drive cars, sometimes we get in accidents. It can happen. There's all sorts of different variables that can take it out of your control. Certainly with uh, the mindset and meeting a new wild rattlesnake. So I toned it down because I want to include these in my life for as long as I live and I want to be able to interact with them. So I need to be certain level responsible. So I need to not be spectacular and do these crazy things that ultimately could end poorly and then I'll lose all of that. Please be a member of usarc.org. USARC fights for all of us in our industry and they're very important uh, for a state level and federal levels to protect our rights as hobbyists herpetoculturists and uh, just basically people that love to include reptiles in their lives. Without them, we would be in real big trouble. And I'm very you know, supportive and involved with US Arc, but I can stress to anybody, I don't care if you have a red-eyed tree frog, a leopard gecko, being supportive of US Arc and being a member and seeing what's going on is very important for the welfare of our industry long-term. As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. I killed him. Hi, Otis. Are you doing a live video? Oh, look, he just, he just huffed and puffed. Look at that. He is wonderful. Otis is so comfortable with people because of years of just being ridiculously socialized, and he's so smart that he's surrounded by everybody that adores him, and he really enjoys human interaction. That's why he's willing to sit there with Clint and have a, a, a great time. And I think Clint is also having a great time. This is incredible. Like this is, this is an experience you just don't have. It's not a thing. It's a so Clint is not, experience. I mean, Clint, it's not dead, right? My snake's alive. Snake's alive and so far so am I. Okay. <laughs> this has been a heck of a, this has been a heck of a weekend. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm about to play with some King Cobras today. King, I've, I've played with all kinds of crocodilians. I sat at this table with a gaboon viper. I sat at this table with multiple rattlesnakes. Uh, I, I held an angry King Cobra. Not just any King Cobra, like an angry one. Uh, I'm not, you know, this, I'm, I can't promise I'll never have a day like this again because you guys will still be here, right? But I've certainly never had a day like this before and I don't think I ever saw this one coming. <laughs> <laughs> Clint, how was that experience? Intense. Intense. <laughs> it was good. It was a positive experience, but very intense. Handleability. Care. Oh, I'm nerds of this hand. I have this hand that doesn't work so well. There's, there's virtually no chance that it is the best pet snake. I beg to differ. Oh. <laughs> Do you now? <laughs> Can I get you over here?
You're a good dude. Oh, uh, we I do have to talk to them all the time for no apparent reason. Them. No reason. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. I am Kevin, or sometimes known as Sylvester Tinkle Bob, and this is a King Cobra.